listening to good afternoon everyone 6.9 earthquake big island in hawaii no tsunami the amount of earthquakes is astounding 229 so far in the last 24 hours largest quake in 40 years neighborhoods steam coming through the roads then inundated with lava flows lava through the forest but here's the interesting thing. It's basaltic magma, not silica rich, which is affected by galactic cosmic rays. But looking at the 40 year time frame, we see it occurred in low solar activity. Cosmic rays are up year upon year. And taking a look at the eruption from the beginning to the intensification, wide angle, and now it's pushing something like this. Lava flows from the Pu'u'u'u vent on Kilauea Normally they'll spill into the ocean, slow moving pahoe hoe lava, steam clouds. There's two angles to the story. I want to cover it both. And this video is brought to you by Hemp Lucid. CBD oil for your mind, body, and spirit. Six point nine rocking the big island. Kilauea volcano recently erupting, string of earthquakes. Location here on the map. I'm going to get really in detail with the maps. May 4th, 6.9 magnitude, and the quakes continue into today. They're into the multiple hundreds now every 24 hours. Now I want you to read the headlines with me as we take a trip through history as well, back to the 1790s. Hawaii rattled by quakes, Kilauea volcano spewing lava and toxic gas. Also the largest quake since 1975. We'll put that at say 42, 43 years. Look here from the USGS on the one day total. 229 quakes. Significant quakes. This is just yesterday as you can see the date May 5th, May 4th, May 3rd. 6.9, that's the largest quake that's on the planet in Hawaii. Not normal at all. And remember these reports that have been coming out over the last couple of years linking galactic cosmic ray increases due to a weakened magnetosphere with explosive volcanic eruptions due to a sun going through a grand solar minimum phase. The only thing is, these are basaltic magma chambers, not silica rich. So the galactic cosmic ray increases directly to the eruptive force. Can't really draw the connection there. What we have to do is look at sunspot activity. We're talking about 43 years, largest quake since that time. We're at the far right of the chart. Now go back 40 years. Where do we go? Yeah, into the 1970s, lowest solar activity as well during this time frame back in the last 60 years. Correlation. Let's take a look at Kilauea, the world's most active volcanic mass. It has been erupting continuously since the early 1980s. But then we find in the historical record 1790 steam explosion. 1924, large explosion, but less violent than the 1790 eruption. And we're heading back into a 400 year cycle on the grand solar minimum. And then suddenly there's another explosive event on this island that I can draw a correlation with. There's something going on with the sun's decreased activity that's activating these magma chambers globally. Now, since I brought up cosmic rays, let's take a look. Carlos Ramirez doing an excellent job, as always, compiling the data. 2014, 15, 16, and right in the post, 2017 at 91.8. And we are going to go up and up from here. And then other reports coming out talking about now that they're finding galactic cosmic rays have up to seven times greater effect on the climate than suggested. I wonder if they're doing the same thing with the silica rich magma chambers across our planet. And I keep talking about the silica rich. Really, what is silica? It's silicon and oxygen. Think of quartz crystals. It's about the simplest way to boil it down. Silica rich magma 
Here's some images from below. You got the Philippines, anywhere that you see, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Philippines, Ring of Fire, specifically Asia, most of them are silica rich. So when we had Tambora with a year without a summer, that's a perfect example. So I wanted to start giving a couple of timelines here for you to follow as well. This is not a random occurrence that just came out of nowhere. This is following the timeline of amplification of the grand solar minimum. And I'll just spell it out for you here. The yellow is where we were and we're transiting into the green into solar cycle 25. I've used one unit of change, which is still in the yellow. You can see the arrow. That one arrow is one unit of change. But as you see, as we go from 2017 into 2018, there was a ramp up. It was a double amplification. And now we're going from 2018 into 19, and we're going to see a four times ramp up in unusual weather as we get into these last six months of the year. Now, volcanic activity is going to go hand in hand with this. You are kidding me if you do not believe these two are related. As well as the freak storms, the atmospheric compression events, the out of season temperatures and the jet streams wandering, that's from the magnetosphere weakening. Our jet streams are going out of flow because of a weakened magnetosphere, not CO2, not you, it is the sun. Now, a large earthquake is one thing, almost 7.0. You have to wonder, was it downgraded from a seven Hawaii's Kilauea volcano erupts, causing mass evacuations. Let's take a look here on the maps. I want to get into some more details where the lava flows are happening so you can really dissect this and be able to explain it to other people when you're talking. So this is the big island of Hawaii. You have all the other islands, Maui, Lanai, Oahu, where you know Waikiki Beach is. And then you keep going out west to Kauai Island, which is one of the best if you ever get out there hiking. Amazing. And Ni'ihau, that's still off limits. You need permission to go out there. There's a really good satellite photo. Uh, you can see the different coloration. What we're looking for is to the east and right almost in the center coastline. You see those black lines that look like lava flows coming down to the sea? That's the same area. That is, that's Pu'u'o vent and Napu crater pouring down into the coastline. Now, they've had to evacuate these neighborhoods prior as well. Lava flows came through a couple of times. Burned down homes, had evacuations. But this time, steam's coming right out of the roads. It's a different kind of situation that's happening now. It's much more intense, much faster. And in But when your neighborhood goes like this and you're driving down the road, it's pretty scary to see steam and cracks coming out of the road. But then when you try to go home, the roads are covered in lava several feet deep in your telephone poles are burning and houses are on fire this is why they're evacuating now you might look at this photo and say well it's just like a little tiny straw of lava going through there or something no it is massive the amount of lava coming down here going through the forest coming into residential neighborhoods and down to the coast it's cutting off roads and highways this is the reason for the evacuation and this is one of the best representations I can possibly find on the net. It's not that this is even a flow anymore. You see the explosive debris coming out of what looks like a new vent forming there. Just off the roadside to the, to the west or to the left. That is being shot up into the air. That is not a flow. Now, there's a different kind of lava. This looks like it's the ah-ah uh -uh lava. That one that's really spiky, really sharp. It's like needles when it comes down. That's why they call it ah-ah. Uh -uh. Because when you step on it, you go, ah, my feet. That's the name. And, you know, pahoehoe lava is that pillow lava. So it's a little bit easier map for you to take a look at, but you'll see the same exact colorations, areas here for you. Kilauea volcano. And then up to the northeast there, you have Hilo. Let's trace back through time, though. These eruptions, they do come, but this one is exceptionally large. Now, the Pu'u'u'u -oh -oh crater, where this is coming out of currently, has actually moved. If you go far over to the left, you'll see 1982. Take a look at the 77 eruption. You got the 1983 at Napu. 65, 74 at Mauna Ulu. 
So that's great and it gives us some dates and you notice that the, the lava tubes themselves are moving around under the earth. But this is where it's actually coming out of the ground and they've mapped this out so you can see where the eruptions were by the year. So that darker red is 2007, 2008 and you can see where those little lines are approximately halfway up. That's another evacuation that went right through the center of the neighborhoods up there and the communities at the time. That was another evacuation event, homes caught on fire, national news. But we get in 1992, that's that sort of sandy color to the left. And then up to the right, that more whitish kind of sandy color. That's the mid 90s lava flows. And then that super dark green that you can see right up where all the cluster of number is, that's Pu'u'o'o vent up there. And then Napu crater will be a little bit down to the south and to the west. And the reason I bring this up, this is the Pahoehoe lava. This is what flows out all the time. It's been going like this since the 1980s. Gentle, gradual flow. People walk right up to this stuff, stick sticks in it, and it's really slow moving. When they have larger eruptions, it looks like this. Please compare this. This is the reason I'm doing the whole video. I want you to see this is the normal this is what the eruptions are like. This is what you would expect from a large eruption out of Pu'u'u'u or somewhere up there on the Kilauea vent. Notice how little smoke there is. Notice how little explosive activity there is. Yeah, there's pressure, but it's, it's not all kind of ripping out of the ground year without a summer type. It is contained and very gentle in terms of volcanic eruptions. Let's take a look. This is the vent itself that just collapsed and this is where the eruption has come from over the last few days along with the earthquakes. You can see it starts to intensify. And look at the difference as the eruptions are starting. And here we go. Now it's come to this massive phase and it's still ongoing. That looks nothing like the prior eruptions that were just the normal through the 1970s, 80s, 90s. Into the 2000s, the activity kind of ceased and all there were were lava tubes pushing out to the beaches, which is this right here. You'll see exactly where it started to hit the coastline. And still, the epicenter is always at Pu'u'u'u on this side of the island. Lava flows 1983 to 2018. Very clear where they're going. And when I say rivers of lava, not eruptions of lava. This is it. There was still the magma chambers moving and everything was moving underground. It was creating new tubes. Some would get blocked off. It would go in a different direction. Some would come out above ground. It would get blocked off. It would curve. It would do it. Would, it was this dance of earth, of heat, of magma, following the path of least resistance to the sea. And when it arrived there, huge steam events. This was pouring into the ocean for decades, creating new lands, extensions of the island forming in this area. And when you're coming up to the steam pouring into the ocean, you can see this thing's like seven kilometers tall. It's very visible, very easy to see when you're walking around on that part of the island. And then you get a little closer and you start to see where the steam is originating from. So remember, these are two entirely separate things. So if they start talking about the news about the steam cloud and everything, that's not the actual eruptive event up on Pu'u'u'u. This is a lava tube or breakout river of lava that's coming down and going into the ocean. They're two separate places and two different events happening. Although they're definitely correlated with intensity, activity, ramp up. So when I'm talking about the steam cloud, this thing's rising significantly into the atmosphere. And you're getting toward dusk and just some mesmerizing beauty here. And then I'll bring you a close up here so you can really see where the island building is going on. I'm going to wide out on that forecast so you can see it again. It is abundantly clear that these volcanic uptick that we're seeing globally is related to the intensification of the grand solar minimum as we're marching lockstep into the low point of solar activity during this 400 year cycle. We're going from the yellow into the green. And you'll notice that the straddling between yellow and green is between 2018 and 2019. 
Now notice the amplification. The wave splits much more rapidly coming into 2019. I am absolutely saying that these six months from July to the end of the year are going to be more volcanic eruptions. That's a given. The amount of hail that's going to come out of the skies is going to frighten you by the end of the year. Thank you so much for spending your time. I hope you got a little bit out of the video to explain and understand more what's happening with this volcanic eruption, the earthquakes going on over there. And this video was made possible by Hemp Lucid CBD oil for your mind, your body, and your spirit. I've linked everything below in the description box. If you're going to do some research on the articles about the lava, please do yourself a favor and do some research on CBD. 